Welcome back to part two of a probably a four part series on going over the answers to your review. Uh, so we left off talking about quantitative physical properties versus qualitative. Uh, when we do labs we almost always try and collect quantitative because quantitative means in numbers. So quantitative physical properties would be properties of a substance where we could actually collect a number. So the, the boiling point is a number. Okay, the melting point is a number. Qualitative means not in numbers or describing the quality of something. And so things like it's is it malleable? It's color. These are qualitative physical properties. Next, topic three, we talked about the law of conservation of mass. So in a chemical reaction, the reactants versus the products. And so the mass of all the reactants will always equal the mass of all the products. So, for example, if we had this, if we had five grams for one of the products, seven grams for the other, the total on this side is 12. This side has to add up to 12 grams. So if this one was 10 grams, then we could find this one, it would have to be two. Uh, electrolysis is a chemical reaction where we decompose water into its elements, so hydrogen and oxygen. Electrolysis requires electricity to do this, and so it's an endothermic reaction. Bohr's atomic model. So in Bohr's model, he describes an atom as looking like this. So if you take, for example, something like the lithium atom. Lithium is number three on the periodic table, so its atom would be three protons in the nucleus, and then two electrons, and then one electron, the valence shell there, one electron. There's three electrons in total. And then the number of neutrons would also be uh, well, we'd have to check the atomic number to see. I think it's four, but I'd have to check. And how's that different than the quantum model? Well, this is what Bohr said electrons were doing. In the quantum model, it is believed in a quantum model that the electrons are more in a cloud. Okay, they they don't sort of they don't have these defined necessarily locations like Bohr. Uh, write the element symbols for hydrogen. So you should know your elements. Helium, calcium, sodium, and gold. There you go. What is the chemical family? So families are horizontal groups on the periodic table. So the periodic table looks something like this. And there are certain families which have the same properties. So you should know the noble gas family, which is the last one, number 18, noble gases. And they're very, we call them inert. Inert means they're non-reactive. And then beside that, we should know the halogens. Over here, we should know the alkali metals, which are very reactive because they have one valence electron. And then the alkaline earth metals which are beside them, earth metals. Uh, so it says compare the alkali and the alkaline earth metals. These have one valence electron in their outer shell. These have two. These, the alkali, are more reactive. These are less reactive. Noble gases and what are they commonly used for? Noble gases are used obviously to absorb energy but they're also used to make lots of lights because they don't uh, obviously they don't combust and react at all. Halogens are considered highly reactive. What are the halogen uses? Halogens are things like chlorine, fluorine, helium,